Okay, now we're going to talk about using blood. Your blood. Or somebody else's. Obviously, natural, locally sourced blood is um, better for the environment, but, you know, do the best you can. I'm joking. Don't go around taking other people's blood. Come on, grow up. Just try and think about what I'm talking about here. Because I think that blood in magic has been thoroughly misunderstood. Taking into account my experiences with both radionics and with Spooky 2, when I place my DNA into the Spooky 2 remotes, for instance, it affects me. Okay, it doesn't affect anybody else. If I put a drop of my blood on a piece of blotting paper in the Spooky 2 remote for a period of three days, then, because the DNA will only last for three days from a drop of blood using that method, it will last longer with the radionic method. That will affect me due to quantum entanglement, okay, due to the fact that my DNA, my genetic information is in that thing, my energy field is then going to be affected by that drop of blood, fingernail clipping, whatever it is that I've placed within that remote unit. This tells us something, okay, because I've heard stories way, way back in the day, during the day, you know, 30 years ago, when I was just knee-high to a grasshopper and naive and full of the joys of spring and all that kind of stuff, right? When I was young, I'd hear stories about people, men, right, going up to lady friends that they happen to have and saying, could I possibly have some of your menstrual blood because I want to do something with runes? And apparently these ladies were rather broad-minded and were perfectly willing to provide a sample. I think this is wrong because of my experiences with radionics and Spooky 2. And I think this is wrong because whatever working he's going to be doing, taking into account that the body is an energetic system, you're using your energy field to try and communicate a particular intention using all the exercises I mentioned in the past few videos, then your intention will be sent to that woman. Right, if I did that and a woman gave me her menstrual blood, I would essentially, no matter, even if I'm doing a spell for myself, I will be affecting her. I think that's wrong. I think there's a certain level of unethical behavior associated with this. And I think it's not really taken into account how blood actually works and how DNA works and how quantum entanglement works. So if you're going to use a sample of DNA in any of your workings and it's a spell for you or a working for you or a whatever for you, use your DNA. All right whoever's DNA is going to be used in, you know, on your witness plate, on your witness sample plate, will be what gets affected. All right, it's like the output of the radionics machine is going to output that, it's going to broadcast that to that particular person. All right, so if you're going to use blood, think carefully. If you're going to use fingernails, think carefully. If you're going to use the bulb of someone's hair, all right, you pull out the hair with the bulb on it, then that's also a good source of DNA. Right, but whoever's DNA is included in this will get affected. So you have to be thoughtful in terms of what you're trying to achieve. So as far as just like any blood will do, and I saw a Charles Cosmanio video, and he put a drop of his own blood into you know on, on in the input well of his radionics machine to try and send something out. No, the entire machine, right, is going to be affected by your intention input plate, output plate, and so on and so forth. The whole machine is going to be affected. So essentially, what's he doing trying to do a spell on somebody else if he's using his own blood? It's ridiculous. It shows lack of thought about occult processes and about how quantum entanglement operates and how consciousness involved with, with quantum entanglement could operate. So therefore, when you're using blood, think with great care, all right? There's lots of other things I could discuss about that, but I don't want to give um, you sick weirdos too many ideas. So just think about when you're using DNA, think about the fact that the DNA of the person it comes from will be affected by your workings. That's essentially the thesis or the hypothesis, so to speak, of how blood or DNA can operate in a magical situation. And don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, favorite and share and all this other YouTube -y stuff and um, Search the channel, there's some fun stuff there, come on.